Deafness can be experienced in different levels and when we can amplify natural sound and enable someone to hear um, natural acoustic sound, we'll generally do that and sometimes that involves using hearing aids or other types of amplification devices. And so cochlear implantation comes into play when even the loudest conventional forms of amplification are not providing enough um, access to sound in a way that the brain can receive and, and understand. The cochlear implant replaces acoustic stimulation with a direct electrical stimulation to the nerve that delivers sound to the brain so that the brain can then, through rehabilitation, learn to interpret those signals as understandable speech and language. So broadly speaking, a cochlear implant will consist of two main parts um, and each different model will look slightly different, but I'm just going to talk you through one. So here we've got the bit that you might recognise because this is the bit that sits outside of the head and is visible on people that have cochlear implants out and about in public. You've got a microphone and processor and that's also connected to a coil. The microphone in this case sits on the ear and this hook helps, to, helps it to sit in place. This will receive sound via the microphone and digitise it and send it towards the coil which then connects via magnet through the scalp to the internal component. So this is a model of the internal component. This is the portion that is surgically implanted. You'll see that it's very slim now, um, so that it's, it's really not very palpable under the skin um, compared to what it was in previous generations. Um, looking more closely at it, you've got a receiver stimulator, which connects via magnet to the external portion, and connected to that is an electrode and that's the bit that's threaded into the cochlea very carefully in order to provide bespoke electrical stimulation to different parts of the inner ear. 